Most of the people that are using cold and frankly suggesting cold as a means to increase metabolism fat loss are suggesting the exact wrong protocol. In fact, the one I'm going to recommend is 180 degrees in the opposite direction to the typical protocol that you'd hear about. So let's talk about how to use cold and how to leverage shiver as a particularly strong stimulus to increase fat loss through mobilization and oxidation of these fatty acids. If you get into cold water, or an ice bath or a cold day, and you try and remain calm and resist shivering, you actually short circuit this mechanism for increasing brown fat thermogenesis. The paper published in Nature shows that it is shivering itself that causes the brown fat to increase your burning, your burn rate and your metabolism. And it works like this. When you get into cold and you shiver, the shivering, those that low level movement of the muscle, those small movements, triggers the release of a molecule called succinate, S-U-C-C-I-N-A-T-E, succinate. And succinate acts on the brown fat to increase brown fat thermogenesis and fat burning overall. And it also, over time, can increase the amount of brown fat by converting beige fat into true brown fat. So how many times a week do you need to expose yourself to cold? will depend on how much fat you're trying to lose and how much you're trying to increase your metabolism. There are studies that describe positive effects on fat loss of exposing yourself to cold for anywhere between one and five times per week. But it turns out that just one exposure per week can be valuable. The question then is how long to get into that cold environment and how cold should that environment be? So first, let's talk about how long to get into that cold environment. The answer here might be a little bit different than you might imagine. Most of you might think, oh, well, if one minute is good, three minutes is better. And if three minutes is better then 10 minutes is best. It turns out that if you want to trigger the shiver, what you want to do is to get into the cold and then get out of the cold and typically not dry off and then get back into the cold and out of the cold. That will definitely stimulate more shivering than just getting into the cold itself. So how cold should it be? And look, if you get into water that's very, very cold, it can actually shock your heart. It can actually give you a heart attack if it's truly, truly Truly ice cold and you're not adapted to that. So just cold enough to be uncomfortable is a good place to start. For some of you, that's going to be 60 degrees. For some of you, that's going to be 55 degrees. For some of you, it's going to be high 30s, right? Depends on how cold adapted you are and people vary in terms of how well they tolerate the cold. So here's a potential kind of sets reps protocol that you can play with. Find a temperature that induces shiver for you. That's going to vary depending on your cold tolerance and how cold adapted you are one to three, maybe five times a week. Get in until you start to shiver, genuinely shiver. After about a minute or so, get out. Spend one to three minutes out, but don't dry off. Get back in for anywhere from one to three minutes, but try and access the shiver point again. And you might do three repetitions of that. So it's three times in and three times out total. That's a great starting place. And what you don't want to do is build up your tolerance to cold so fast that pretty soon you're able to resist the shiver because remember the shiver is the source of the succinate release that will trigger brown fat thermogenesis. And this also speaks to the rationale for using cold exposure to accelerate fat loss for certain periods, but then maybe not doing it year round if fat loss is your goal. Maybe use it for two, three months at a time and then stop for two, three months at a time because it is such a potent stimulus provided you engage in the shiver.